you are a horseback riding student, then you are no doubt getting very excited about a challenge that is just around the corner. No stir up November. I'm going to share some information about this challenge and some suggestions about how to get the most out of it. You don't want to miss it, so stick around. Noster up November is a traditional time of the year that uh, students of riding are going to take on the challenge of getting, dropping their stirrups, taking their feet out of their stirrups and doing some training without their stirrups. Uh, it's a bigger thing possibly in the hunter jumper world than in the dressage world, but we do it too. <laughs> and actually last November I uh, took my stirrups off my saddle and I worked without my stirrups with my horse here Pippa for months so my no stirrup November was like a no stirrup six months <laughs> but I don't really recommend that if you are a younger newer beginning student with a horse that you're on that maybe it's a lesson horse uh, the best way to approach No Stirrup November is to uh, don't think about it as where you have to do it the whole month necessarily. So my recommendation on No Stirrup November is to start in increments. The best thing to do, I think, is at the end of your lesson or towards the end of your lesson, let's say the last 10 or 15 minutes, when you've been working at a lesson maybe with your instructor and you're really warmed up and your horse is warmed up and their back is warmed up and supple, that that's a good time to spend 10 minutes to drop your stirrups. Um, I have my feet in my stirrups now. What we would typically do the easiest thing is to bring your stirrups up and just put them over the horse's withers here um, on either side and just cross them over so now they're out of your way and they're out of your legs way and I just recommend at first walking and getting used to the feel of your legs draping down your horse because your leg feels so much longer uh, when you don't have the stirrups there. So what are the stirrups there for anyway? Like why are they even on the saddle to begin with? The um, stirrups are really meant to be an assist for us to balance ourselves in the saddle. But unfortunately what happens, and it definitely happened with me um, earlier in my riding, uh, you sort of depend on them like a lifeline. <laughs> like you start, you can be grabbing your reins as a lifeline and they're not meant to be grabbed and you can be jamming your feet down in the stirrups as a lifeline. And when you're unbalanced on your horse or you get on in an unbalanced position, sometimes you um, have a tendency to grip with your legs and bring your knees back, uh, your legs back, your feet back. And so a lot of times your feet's going, your foot's going all the way through your stirrup or you're jostling your foot out of your stirrup and you're losing your stirrups when you're, when you're riding. And th that's very typical. I mean, I'm gonna say for sure a beginner rider, but I mean, even a beginner to intermediate rider can have this problem, especially when you're going from one gate to another other and you're working on new gates like you're working a lot on your trot or you're working on your canter um, so uh, it's not unusual don't think that you're alone if this has happened to you so a good uh, way to kind of get used to stretching your leg down because when you're riding with even with your feet in your stirrups you really want to be just balancing there that's they're kind of used for a balance not for a standing up and bracing in the stirrups to keep yourself on the horse and and many 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 riders will do that in the progression of their training walk without your stirrups and when you feel um, really secure and balanced doing that and you know asking your horse to turn and uh, kind of use your legs to um, press or bump your horse and ask them to turn and not just uh, pull on your reins. You know, it could be doing all kinds of exercises uh, without your stirrups, just at the walk. And this is a good 
pretty good trot. I'm just starting out with her. I have not been on her this afternoon. We're just getting ourselves out here and warmed up for the video. <laughs> so she's not um, really warmed up, but I mean, she's fairly strong in her back and we've worked a lot on, uh, as you can see, she doesn't want to go. <laughs> I woke her up from her nap, but we're, we're working on sitting trot a lot with stirrups, but um, so she, she's in good shape for this. And I'm kind of in good shape for it. <laughs> so, um, but as you can see, you want to get to a point where you feel secure and you feel balanced and you're not gripping with your legs to keep you in the saddle, but you drape your legs down and you kind of do have to have your inner thigh as a point to support yourself. So my recommendation is take this challenge on, just use it during some of November. Don't go crazy. Um, do it at the end of your lesson when you're warmed up and your horse is warmed up. So let me know in the comments below, are you doing no, no stirrup November? Has your instructor talked to you about it? Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to work on walk and trot and canter or just walk, walk, trot? Um, what are you planning to do? Uh, how are you approaching it? And any suggestions for other people in the comments about no stirrup November and what, how to get the best out of it. <laughs> I'm linking up above a video that um, I think you'd like a lot on the dressage training scale, especially if you're thinking about getting into dressage or taking lessons in dressage. Pippa and I, we might drop our stirrups, but we, like I said, I did it last November for about six months. <laughs> so she, she may not be too anxious and I may not be too anxious, but no, seriously, it's a great uh, tool to use in your training um, to Get a feel for your horse in a way that you will not get if you're just always in your stirrups. Thank you so much, Pippa, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one.